these people right here are like, I'm going into my shop. I'm now it was my shop before it was theirs. <laughs> you want to go in there? Yeah, yeah, let's go in. And it was that moment we sat on the steps and he taught me right there used to be Wallace Racing. On that corner? Right there. We built that shop right here. Oh, uh, this one? Yeah, let's get out and stop right here. I'll explain everything to you. I'm Kenny Wallace. <laughs> <laughs> My big brother, Rusty, loved me so much. When I moved out of St. Louis, now you go back 1984, I'm living here and I'm, I'm a crew chief on the Levi Garrett team for Joe Rutman. That shop is gone, but it was right up there at their Charlotte Motor Speedway. I moved back to St. Louis and I become a race car driver in 1986 in ASA, the American Speed Association, 86, 87, 88. I get a call from my brother, Rusty. Herman, do you wanna come back south that's what we called it. You know, the New Yorkers, everybody in the Midwest, you want to go south and be NASCAR. 1989, we rent David If's shop in Lake Wiley, South Carolina, 1989. And I win, I win the Bush Grand National Rookie of the Year over Jeff Burton, 89. Now at the end of 89, Rusty said, okay, I'm gonna build that building. My brother, Rusty Wallace, built that building for me. So when I, tell everybody how much I love my brother and I'll never be able to repay him. That's why. So 90, the car is still kind of green and white, but 91, we turned that Cox Street lumber car to black with Dayglow 36 numbers. Now we build the building at that time. This is a state of the art building. It's brand new. I mean, we don't got a, we don't have a one inch metal surface plate, but we got these legendary concrete people. They come in and they pour this as level as they can, you know, floating concrete. And then later on, it got enclosed because, come on, come on into your shop. <laughs> these people right here are like, I'm going into my shop. I'm now it was my shop before it was theirs. <laughs> we go down there and tell them that. Yeah, they might hey, get out of my old shop. <laughs> so um, then I end up making it on my own and Rusty sells this shop to Felix Sabatis, okay? And uh, actually, there's a little more to the story, but in uh, 89, 91, 92, I drive the Dirt Devil car out of here. Now, I win the Martinsville race in the Dirt Devil Bush Grand National car out of this shop. Uh, then time goes on and Felix ends up selling the team to, got a legendary old cup owner, forgot. But anyway, uh, and then they enclosed it. We always had a top on it. Out so that overhang, that was open. We always had an overhang. We always had an overhang, but then they, they closed it in. I think there's a picture of the Cox Street Lumber box truck and trailer yes. out there with that open yes. area behind it. This shop was a happy time for me. We did, we, we did good out of this shop. And then of course, as you already know, right across the street here was the great Alan Quick, you know, and I know you've already known about this, but Alan built that building himself. And then Paul Andrews, who grew up in St. Louis with us. Uh, the story with that goes up, uh, Alan Quickie goes to my brother Rusty at the Waldorf Astoria for one of the banquets and goes, hey Rusty, do you know anybody that can run my race team? And, and Alan Quickie says, Rusty, I need to be able to walk out of my business, you know, and have somebody do it all. And my brother Rusty looked at Alan Quickie and said, I only know one guy that can build the race car from the ground up, set it up the way you want it, and you'll win. And it was Paul Andrews. And at the time, Paul was down in Gonzales, Louisiana, because Nikki Prejean took over Rusty's ASA short track stuff, and Paul moved down there. So when Rusty went from ASA to NASCAR, Paul got left behind, so to speak, but not really. Alan Kowicki called Paul Andrews and the rest is history. They win the championship. And then of course, sadly, it's another story. We lose, we lose Alan. But there are so many stories in life at all these shops around here, but those were the days. You know, the, the late 80s and 90s, uh, honestly, horribly put, sadly put, when Earnhardt got killed, it all ended. It's kind of sad, it's like the music stopped, but you know, you, you never think one man, you know, controls a whole sport, but it is sad to say this sport has never recovered since Earnhardt died. He was a god, he was, 
He was, every man wanted to be Earnhardt. Uh, hell, my brother Rusty wanted to be Earnhardt, if, if truth is told. But um, yeah, that, that building there was super nice. You know, we probably had like, I think we had three or four Bush Grand National cars, and that was big. I think we had five employees, and that was big. And I wasn't spoiled because I worked on the cars. I was a fabricator. Back in the Bush Grand National days, I was a fabricator. I was a mechanic. And then I got in the car and drove it too. That's the way those days were. This building right here has a lot of history, and now it's just an old body shop. There's people making a living out of it. But Is that what it is, a body shop? I think it is. I don't know. Estimate. See yeah, a windshield. Yeah, body shop. You pull up there and they come out and estimate how much damage. You know, it's crazy. Almost probably 80% of these former race team buildings are body shops now. I think it's like what they're they, suited for. Yeah, they had body shops in them. You know, because I mean, we listen, you know, the body shop was the very last door on the right. And of course, our body shop was in the, the building itself. And it was, it was suited, you know, had a drain in it. Yeah, so that makes sense. Body shop because a lot of the NASCAR shops are what you would call tainted, meaning chemicals, <laughs> body shop, you know, so yeah, yeah, you would you would want a NASCAR building. There was a lady named Pat Laguerre. Pat Laguerre was a state of the art uh, decorator and she decorated for Earnhardt and then Earnhardt told Rusty and I'm sure Pat's still doing good. Look her up, Pat Laguerre. She came in here, we had green carpeting, we had gold and dark wood and I, you know, that stuff's still in my, my memory. I wonder if it still looks like that in there. Yeah. You want to go in there? Yeah. Yeah. Let's go in. We could, well, maybe we could leave the truck here, walk down there or leave pull down. All right. Let's just walk in live. All right. We'll ask for forgiveness. Let's ask for forgiveness. Maybe we'll get lucky and get two shop tours out of this. This uh, is a big time war for me. When was the last time you walked into this building? Well, this is also a bad memory too, because this is the garage that Felix Sabatis fired me from. So this was when I, in 93, when I was driving the Dirt Devil car in Cup, my very first, we were running out of the shop and Felix fired me. So this shop is a mixed bag of happiness and sad for me. I've had dreams about this place. The brick's still really nice. Shru shrubbery was a big deal back then. Everybody had shrubbery. Oh yeah, that's different. Oh my God. It is, you don't even know. So my name's Kenny Wallace. We originally, <laughs> we originally built this building. Nice to meet you. I'm sorry to intrude. <laughs> this is a good friend of mine. This is uh, the Stapleton YouTube channel. They do a lot of history. Awesome. I think we watched some of your videos. You do all of the local yeah. you know, garages and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, so what would happen this. is, <laughs> What would happen is we'd come in here and that was the parts room. So that wall was never there. And there was a beautiful, this was all green carpeting. That was Rusty's office. Rusty's, Rusty's 1989 Winston Cup trophy uh -huh. sat right behind his desk uh -huh. between those two windows. <laughs> See where the Gerber collision glass is? Yeah. Rusty's massive Winston Cup championship trophy sat right there behind his desk. That was Rusty's office. This was just stuff. This is where the secretary sat. Dick Pacers, one of Rusty's business partners, still to this day, his daughter worked here. This is here, but that really would have been over that way. And there it is. What's going on? My name's Kenny Wallace. I know, Kenny. We built this building. <laughs> That's right. This is crazy. Hey, Kenny. Wow. Bernie invited. Hey, Bernie. Bernie, good to he see you. Kenny Wallace, right? He's here to visit us. He was in the door a while ago. I tell you what, it's, it don't look bad. That's great. You still <laughs> we, got it. We try to keep it up. It, it doesn't look bad. Yeah, we try. I got, I got to tell you about that right there. So, uh, How are you? I'm Kenny Wallace. Oh, yeah. I got to tell you, th this is a big deal. So. Before we had one inch, be, before we had one inch uh, level metal plates to jig our cars on, this was a big deal. This was, this was Rusty Wallace's idea. This was our setup. This is where we put the race cars. And at the time, this was the most level we could get any concrete person in the United States. Mm -hmm. It didn't turn out right. And Rusty made them chop it all out. It was a disaster. Yes. And uh, we had it re-poured, and at that time, that was 
thought as the most level piece of ground <laughs> yeah. around. Yeah. Yeah, and that was a big deal. Yeah, and then they had the metal plate back there. Later then that on. was our, that was our fabrication. Yeah. Yeah, I remember we sold that plate. I'll be down. Yeah. So then, that's where we built the cars. This is where they were right here. That room right there is what we call our transmission and gear room. You know, because we have the nine inch Ford rear ends and we must have had 30 years from Daytona all the way to Hickory, you know. Wow. 289, 293. You go to Hickory, you're running a six something. My toolbox that I have in my shop right now sat right there. Wow. Right here. I thought I had a lot of now, right here. This is where my toolbox was all the time. And I, and I got to tell you another story. Come here, you'll love this story. This one's unbelievable. Let me see if the steps are still there. No. No, they're gone. Okay. Well, you can see the line. So yeah, we had to close that off. Okay. Yeah. So this was this was the set of steps right here. So um, this is where we put the bodies on the car. Then our body shop was through there. So my brother Rusty gets into Daryl Waltrip in the all-star race and spins him out. And Daryl Waltrip says, you can choke on that $200,000. <laughs> so that was a time in life when Rusty was the good guy. And coming to the checkered flag, my brother Rusty Wallace spins Daryl out and the, and the crew starts fighting, right? <laughs> Rusty goes from wearing the white hat to everybody hated my brother. It, it devastated him. Rusty comes here, and I'm back here working, and it's like six o'clock at night, and everybody left. And me and Rusty sit on these steps. Me and Rusty Wallace, my brother. And he goes, come here, Herm. And we sit down, and he said, my brother says this to me. And Rusty, is, and he's watching this, he goes, you know what, Herman? Herman's my nickname. He said, don't change. He said, everybody likes you. He says, I can piss off people way easier than you can. And now I'm the bad guy. So Rusty went from everybody loved Rusty. Mm -hmm. And in one moment, one corner, spun Daryl Walter about. And for some reason, everybody started hating Rusty. And it was that moment we sat on the steps and he taught me. Rusty said, just stay you. Stay Kenny Wallace. Don't change. And I'll never forget that as long as I live right there. Back in the day, toy, uh, Pontiac sponsored us. So you use the real body of the car. So, you know, Pontiac sent you the hood, the roof, the deck, and we would put all that metal up there. You know, like if we went to build a new car, we needed the hood, the roof, you know, all that. So mm -hmm. up there's where all that went. Well, later on that became a little parts room and, and my crew chief, Steve Bird, that's where, that's where, Birdie, that's where Birdie, called the whole team in and he looked at all of us and he started he was crying birdie i'm sorry buddy and he said i have emphysema but, but birdie smoked a lot birdie's doing good he's living in florida now but that office right there is where steve bird the great crew chief that took rob moroso to all his wins and made randy lajoy uh you know one of the 75 greatest drivers that crew chief steve bird he was my crew chief and took me to my win that office right there is where he told us he had emphysema. Wow. A lot of memories in here. When did that get added on? So we always had an overhang. This channel and doing these videos is our full-time job. It's a lot of work and we'd like it to grow. If you're enjoying this stuff, it would cost absolutely nothing for you to help us by hitting the thumbs up button. So when we sold it to Felix Sabatis and, and created the, the number 40 Dirt Devil Cup car, it was housed out of here. But then Felix sold this place to, it's a legendary name, great. Uh, he ended up starting the NASCAR race day planes, uh, Brooks. But it was pretty cool watching, you know, back in the day, this was one of the state-of-the-art NASCAR shops. Now it's an old beat-up well, body shop. Diamond Ridge had it for a while, right? I think that was the last one that was in here. Those, before those are Diamond Ridge colors. Yeah. These colors are diamond rich colors. Gary Bechtel, 
I'm I think that was him. But it was Diamond Ridge Motorsports when yeah. we came in here. You know what? I, I you didn't paint this? Mm -hmm. You didn't paint this? This was already like that? Uh huh. Cool. No, it was like this. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. 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 What year was that? Yeah, you do a good job. Yeah. Oh, yeah. what year did we buy dust, this place? 2000, 2002, right something like that. I'm heading oh, back to St. Louis. My flight leaves later. So I'm really glad I came here because this shop is in a lot of my dreams. You know, a lot of memories. A lot sure. of memories. Yeah. yeah, a lot of memories here. Out of this shop was the very first cup car I ever drove in my life. And an insurance man, forgot his name, but anyway, we built that cup car and I went to North Wilkesboro for the cup race. And I'm running good. I'm running like top 10. Davey Allison in the 28 Tex Wahablin car. We're going down into one and he loses his brakes. And Davey's a good friend of mine. And Davey just knocked the ever-living hell out of me and spun me out and wrecked me, put me out of the race. Uh, but that car was built here. So my very first cup car I ever drove, I think it was 99, number 99, mm -hmm. was out of here. Yep, fabric built the cars here, storage up there, clean stuff was here, set up. And there's pictures out front. I gotta show you this. <laughs> I went to the front the grass up here. I took a putty knife and I popped Wallace Racing off the sign. And it wasn't too easy to do, but I was able to do it. See that? See those word Wallace Racing? Mm -hmm. oh, wow. Those exact letters were on a sign right out here. Oh, really? Wow. Yep. Wow. And, and, and I took them and I kept them forever and I hung them up in my race shop. Yeah, those right there. I wondered where that came from. Right here. That's crazy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, this was more therapeutic for me. Thank you, guys. thank you guys for letting me walk oh, in here. No problem. Absolutely. Yes, pretty cool. Yeah, the old history and stuff around here is thank pretty you. cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All it's crazy because all the NASCAR shops are now body shops. <laughs> yeah. I know. Still got old. Uh, what's the space oh, over here? Oh, quick, man. Shop. That's just yeah. legendary. Yeah. Bobby Allison's up here. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, now they're running Spire over here. Oh, Spire really? Motorsports. Out of Quickie's shop? Mm -hmm. Right here. Right I, well, good. That's good to see that. Yep. What about Allison's shop up in the cul-de-sac? I'm not sure. There's still a team back there, but I'm not real sure who it is. I'll be done. Rev Racing, I believe. Rev? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm not sure who they yeah. are. Well, we better get going. My plane leaves at 2.51, <laughs> and we still got more, more to do. <laughs> awesome. Y'all are really nice. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. All right, guys. Have yeah. a good week. All right. That's nuts. It's still there. That is fuck. That is incredible. <laughs> Do you want to take a picture with the building? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, this this place is like like I said good and bad for me. Walking around with you makes makes my job a lot easier. Normally it takes me a lot of phone calls and haggling around <laughs> getting there. You're just like, "Let's just walk in." Let's, let's go up here and take it. I mean, you know, it's it's a deal where I'm the old man now. I'm the teacher, right? When I was here, I was 29 years old. At a, you know, actually younger. No, I tell you what, I was 26 years old when I was here. So stop and think about it. I was here 26 years old and now I'll be 60 in August. You were my age. Right, and I was young, you couldn't wear me out. <laughs> we gonna take a picture? Yeah. yeah. And now you can just walk in there. This is my building yeah, first. Yeah, get out of my building. <laughs> Get out of my damn building. You know what was great though? <laughs> what was great, and I mean this humbly, they showed me respect. They're like, and they were glad to have we you. We heard about that. We heard about that. <laughs> yeah. Right here. Yep, this is I'll it. be darned. Wow. <laughs> 1994 in my career. Fillmore Racing. The team is out of Nashville, Tennessee. If you want to see part two of this, head on over to the channel page and watch the Kenny Wallace visits Fillmore Racing building. We posted it before this one, so it's live already. 